just did, did not, you know, you just couldn't think they were there. But this was the point where listening to it in quadraphonic sound through four speakers was the sounds just went around the room and there was little bells and chimes and, and all this was going on. And every time, it seemed like every time you listened to it, you heard something that you never heard before. And uh, that for me was phenomenal. And nobody was doing that. Nobody had ever done that. And it was stunning. I, I, wow. I mean, thinking about it now, I mean, I, I just, I can remember how I felt sitting in that room. On September the 15th, 1975, Pink Floyd released Wish You Were Here, an album that has aged magnificently, although the band had many internal problems when recording it. With the impending divorces of both Nick Mason and Roger Waters, the band were also exhausted and affected by the fact that after their tremendous success of Dark Side of the Moon, they had effectively achieved all the goals that they had originally set. Wish You Were Here was a touching and intricate concept album that belies these problems and that paid a number of subtle tributes to the former frontman Sid Barrett. So Wish You Were Here is quite a dark album. Yeah, I think it's very cold and stark by comparison with Dark Side of the Moon, which is a very warm album. But I think that's a result of the fact that they had worldwide fame and fortune thrust upon them in an instant. But this is another number one album but it's the very much the opposite to Dark Side of the Moon and there's a lot of tension within the band at that time and I think that comes through on that album definitely How much is it a group effort? Very fraught period I would say that um, there were a lot of internal squabbling at that time Roger Waters certainly who had written Dark Side of the Moon single handedly almost completely dreamt up the concept of Wish You Were Here and it's an album that is starting to show his if you like unilateral control of the group The lush strains of the album Centerpiece, Shine On You Crazy Diamond remains perennially popular or the melancholy title track that became a live favourite for years to come The album again topped the US charts as well as giving the band their first number one since Atom Heart Mother as remarkably, Dark Side of the Moon never went to number one in Britain. Despite the ever-gathering success that Pink Floyd was starting to enjoy, they've always exhibited a certain amount of reticence